Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, you will learn how to deploy embedding models on your local CPU using LM Studio. If you're new to LM Studio, you can watch our previous video on the subject, which will be linked in the description. Once we install and open LM Studio, we immediately land on this main page. We can go straight to the search section and look for any hugging face embedding model using the search engine. In this video, we will try the latest Gnomic model, which is a powerful yet lightweight embedding model developed by Gnomic AI. We can see it's been very popular recently from the amount of downloads and has only 137 million parameters, which guarantees a very high inference speed without the need for GPUs. One particularity of this model is that it works best with task instruction prefixes, which we insert at the beginning of our text to signal the type of task we want the embedding to be optimized for. In the case of RAG, for example, as we will see later in this tutorial, we add a search document prefix to the chunks before embedding them and adding them to the vector store, and we add a search query prefix to the query during the search phase. If you want to try out other models, a nice tool to have is the MTEB leaderboard, which is a comprehensive ranking of embedding models, both open and closed source, including useful details such as the model size, required memory, embedding dimensions, and context size. The ranking is based on an average score on 56 datasets for multiple tasks, mostly in English, and we can see that our gnomic model lies in the 61st place, right above OpenAI's text embedding three small model. Moving back to LM Studio, we start by searching for our gnomic model, just like we would do on Hugging Face. Click on Go, and we immediately get the model we're looking for. Naturally, in the GGUF format, so that LM Studio can take advantage of the underlying Llama CPP technology for fast inference on CPU. We also get a bunch of files corresponding to different quantization levels, and we will pick the 8-bit version, which seems like a pretty good trade-off between quality and inference speed. So we hit the download button, wait for the model to be installed, and once the download is complete, we can go straight to the local server section, specifically to this area dedicated to the deployment of embedding models. All we have to do is select the model we want to load, which will be the gnomic model we just installed, and hit start server. And that's it. The model is immediately deployed, and we can see the URL of the specific endpoint we need to call for embedding models. Now that we have deployed our embedding model, let's see how we can seamlessly integrate it with Langchain to make a RAG application. So the first step is to install the Langchain OpenAI package, which will be used to create a wrapper around our locally deployed model, and the Langchain Quadrant package, which will be used to create our vector store. The second step is to instantiate an OpenAI embeddings object with our LM Studio Base URL. We will see how to do that with a local URL, as well as with a public URL, which is useful specifically for Colab users. So the local URL case is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is create the OpenAI embeddings object while setting the OpenAI base URL to our local LM Studio endpoint. We also need to specify a random API key to not get an error message since the class expects it. And finally, we need to set check embedding context length to false because otherwise the object tries to count the number of tokens using OpenAI tokenizers and it gives an error message. So once this is done, we can immediately test our embedding model on a sample query by using the embed query method and getting the size of the output vector. We can see it's a vector of dimension 768. Let's now see how we can do the same thing but with a public URL. This is especially useful for Google Colab users who get a connection error when trying to invoke local endpoints. The solution is to simply convert your local host URL to a public URL, and this can be done using ngrok. Ngrok is a cross-platform application that enables developers to expose a local development server to the internet with minimal effort. It does this by making your locally hosted web server appear to be hosted on a subdomain of ngrok.com. You can start by signing up if you don't have an account or simply log in using your Google account. You then land on this main page where you can follow the installation instructions specific to your operating system. Once the download is complete, the first step is to authenticate your ngrok agent by copying and executing this command in your terminal along with your authentication token. After executing this command on your terminal, 
All you have to do is type ngrok, HTTP, and then the local URL you want to expose publicly, which in our case is the LM Studio Base URL. Hit enter, and that's it. We immediately expose our local server to the internet, and we can see that it is forwarding traffic from this public URL to our local LM Studio endpoint. All we have to do now is copy this public URL. Go back to our notebook and insert it in the place of the local base URL in our LangChain object. The other arguments don't need to be changed. Let's now test this new LangChain object based on the public URL. We embed the same input as before and store the result in this vector bis variable. And then we verify that the two obtained vectors are the same. And indeed, we can confirm that we obtain the same output. Next, let's create our vector database to store our embeddings and perform similarity search on them as part of a RAG application. We do this using Quadrant, which is an open source vector database and search engine written in Rust to provide fast and highly scalable vector search capabilities. It allows for various types of vector search, including semantic hybrid and multimodal search and uses single stage filtering to provide fast and reliable retrieval, even with complex metadata filters. Quadrant also provides seamless integration with all major frameworks and providers, such as OpenAI, Langchain, Llama Index, Cohere, and Gemini, and is highly recommended by some of the biggest players in the industry. So, moving to our notebook, we start by importing the necessary methods from the Quadrant package. We then create our Quadrant client with a local path that can be used to persist our vectors in case we want to use them in a different session. Next, we create a collection specific to our embedding model, where we specify the vector size, which is 768 for our gnomic model, and the distance metric that we want to use for similarity search, which in our case will be the cosine distance. Next, let's embed and upsert some documents to populate our quadrant vector store. We create a list of Langchain documents with random content, while making sure to add the search document prefix to the text as required for our gnomic model. We also add some random metadata to the documents in order to test the similarity search along with metadata filtering. So to populate the vector store, we use the from documents method where we specify the list of documents we just created. Our embedding model locally deployed with LM Studio, the location and collection name, and finally, the retrieval mode which will be the dense mode in our case. In future videos, we will explore other modes of retrieval, such as the sparse mode with keyword search algorithms like BM25, and the hybrid mode which combines dense and sparse search methods. Finally, let's perform similarity search with metadata filtering, using our populated vector store and locally hosted embedding model. We start by creating our own custom retrieve function, which takes as arguments a query, the top k value, and a string representing a metadata filter. The function extracts the key and value from the filter string and adds the search query prefix to the query as required for the gnomic model. It also creates the metadata filter by using the filter, field condition, and match value methods of the quadrant package. Let's now use our custom retrieve function. For the query, we will ask for example, what did you think about the movie? We can set the top k to 5 and add a metadata filter specifying that the source of the document must be a tweet. Hit run, and we immediately get the five top results ranked by cosine distance. We can see that the first result is the most relevant to the query, and that all the results respect the metadata constraint. We also get the cosine similarity score associated with each document. And that's it for today's video. As usual, you will find a link to this notebook in the comment section, as well as additional material for further reading in the description. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you appreciate the content, and see you in the next one.